In this video I'm going to show you how to set up a pre-authentication policy on the Netscaler that performs an endpoint analysis check. As part of the endpoint analysis check we're going to look for the MD5 hash of the Citrix receiver executable. Um, if the MD5 hash matches what we've specified then it will allow access to the Netscaler and the user will be able to authenticate and log on. Um, if the MD5 uh, hash doesn't match what we've got configured then the connection uh, will be rejected and the user will be unable to authenticate to the Netscaler until they download and install the version of Citrix Workspace app that matches uh, the MD5 hash that we've configured. Uh, this solution is a great solution for enforcing a specific version of uh, Citrix Receiver or Workspace app um, on your user's endpoints. Um, so if the users don't have those versions that you uh, specify as part of the endpoint analysis check, um, then they won't be able to authenticate and connect to your Netscaler. So it's a great solution for enforcing a specific version of Workspace app. So I'm going to show you how to uh, configure this. Um, in the old days, um, pre-Netscaler 12 and 13, uh, this was all done through uh, classic policies and pre-authentication policies. Um, so you would basically come into here, Citrix Gateway, Global Settings, you would change the pre-authentication uh, parameters here for AAA, you would set that to deny, and then basically you would create um, pre-authentication policies. So under here, pre-authentication, uh, you would create a policy and then you would use the OpSwap uh, EPA editor or the expression editor uh, to look for a specific condition, a registry key, uh, domain check, uh, patch, process running, etc. Um, once you've created the uh, pre-authentication policy, you would have a profile which would basically uh, allow access. Um, and then the, the policy, the pre-authentication policy would be uh, linked to that request action. Um, that's basically no longer in use. That's been deprecated. Um, Citrix has moved this to the advanced uh, policy engine, um, which basically uh, uses uh, advanced authentication policies and endpoint analysis actions. Um, so I'm going to show you where this is configured uh, and I'll show you basically how I've configured this. Um, and then we'll go through a quick scenario where we test this out to make sure it's working. So if we go into security and then if we go into AAA application traffic and then advanced policies and then into policies, um, you can see here I've created an advanced authentication policy. Uh, it's got a name EPA underscore auth poll. Uh, the expression is just true. Um, so it will apply all the time and then basically we've then got uh, an EPA action which is linked to this advanced authentication policy. So if we edit this, you can see here nothing special, it's just set to true and then under action type you can see we've set this to EPA, so endpoint analysis and then we've got an endpoint analysis action called workspace check. So I'll show you basically where the EPA actions are configured. If we go down here, so again under advanced policies, um, if we have a look here under actions, uh, you've got EPA action here. So what this EPA action is doing is it's basically looking for the MD5 hash of the receiver executable. And this is the MD5 hash of the executable. Um, to get the MD5 hash, uh, I use a, a program called Hash My Files, and you just basically point it at your executable and it will display the MD5 hash for you. So you can see here this MD5 hash here matches up uh, with this executable. Um, the uh, expression I used, you use the EPA uh, editor. Uh, basically what you would do is do common and then process. Uh, type in the name of the process, so receiver. Click on the plus here, uh, change the uh, change um, this here to MD5, and then you would basically put receiver in there, and then you'd put the name of the MD5 uh, hash in there, the value of the MD5 hash. So that's basically how, how I built the expression. Uh, very simple. Um, so as I say, it's just looking for the process and uh, once it's got the receiver process, it's then going to check the MD5 hash, uh, which matches uh, this version of, of Workspace app. So once we've basically done that, 
um, we need to then bind this uh, to our uh, N-Flactor authentication flow. Um, so as it's a pre-authentication policy, we want this to happen before authentication takes place. Um, so it has to be added as the first factor uh, in our N factor authentication flow. So if I show you my AAA V server, um, this one here, uh, AAA V server MFA, if we edit this, what I've done is under advanced authentication policies, um, I've bound that EPA underscore auth policy, that advanced authentication policy, which is linked to that EPA action called workspace check. And you can see for the next factor, I've configured a policy label called policy label underscore Azure AD. Um, that policy label will basically um, it redirect um, to Azure AD, which is my IDP uh, using SAML. Um, so I'll show you basically here, uh, policy label Azure AD. You can see it's got an advanced authentication policy, uh, which is using um, an action there, which has got my SAML uh, configuration for Azure AD configured. Um, so what will happen, user will connect in a NetScaler. The first factor, it will perform a pre-authentication check using that EPA scan. If the EPA scan matches, then it will move on to the next factor, uh, which is a redirect to Azure AD. Um, and then I'll log into Azure AD with my MFA and then be passed th back through to my NetScaler. Um, that's basically how I've got it configured. If the version uh, doesn't match, then uh, the pre-authentication scan will fail, the EPA scan will fail, and you just won't be able to authenticate and log in. So let me give you a demonstration of this. So we're gonna go to my NetScaler gateway URL, which is at remote.carmo.com. So straight away, even before I get any type of authentication or redirected to my IDP, you can see it's asking me to uh, run an EPA scan. So I'm going to click yes on that. It's now checking that version of Citrix receiver uh, on my endpoint and it's checking the MD5 hash. Um, as the MD5 hash has matched that version that I've got on the uh, EPA action, it's then allowed me on, it's passed the EPA check and then it's moved me on to the next factor, which is my uh, Azure AD uh, SAML uh, policy. So I'm just gonna log on here. So we're gonna log on with that account. I'm just gonna approve the sign-in request because I've got Azure MFA set up. There we go. And now we're passed back through and there we go. We've got my apps and desktops enumerated. So that's from a working machine. That's from a machine that has that specific version of workspace app that we're looking for um, as part of the EPA uh, check. Now I'm going to show you it from another machine. So I'm just going to log off that one and then we'll jump on to my domain controller, which is this one here. Okay, I'm just going to abort that and then we'll show you basically it from scratch here. So if we have a look at the advanced preferences, so this is my, um, let me show you on my host machine, the version of Workspace app. So if we go support information, you can see I'm ver running version uh, 2010. Uh, this is on the machine that works. So this, this, this version, 2010, that's this version here, the MD5 hash. So 2010, this is the MD5 hash for that version. On my domain controller here, this has got a different version of Workspace app. So if we look here, you can see this is running um, version 1990. So this is a different version to them what we've got on our uh, host machine. So this MD5 hash of this version of Workspace um, doesn't match what we're looking for as part of our EPA uh, scan. So this should fail. So let me show you this. So I'm going to close out of here, close out of here. Uh, we'll go to our Netscaler gateway URL. So remote.carmo.com. Uh, before authentication, you can see the endpoint analysis uh, scan uh, has kicked in the pre-authentication policy. 
uh, it's asking us to run the endpoint analysis scan so we'll click yes on that and because our MD5 hash of our version of Citrix receiver doesn't match what we've got on the EPA action you can see we're denied access to the environment we're not even allowed to authenticate um, to get onto the net scaler so you can see that has worked absolutely fine um, it's a good solution um, if you want specific versions of workspace app uh, on those endpoints that your users are connecting from uh, this solution uh, will do that for you um, it allows you to control which versions of workspace app uh, are allowed to connect to the environment so it puts the power in your hands um, if a user simply has an old version of Citrix receiver or workspace app they won't be able to connect so then they need to upgrade to the specific version that you're looking for so it's a good solution in that aspect hope you enjoyed the video thank you for watching